on this edition of Ultrasound. We catch up with the second generation of MTV VJs. Well, I see you saw the old uh, SS seal here. When you're that young, it's, it's a dream gig. Take a look back at the decade of big stars, bigger hair, outrageous style, and personalities to match. It was attitude, it was fun, it was bright, it was happening, it was, um, it was in your face. And reminisce with those who can say, I was an MTV VJ. By the mid-80s, everyone knew what a VJ was, as the power of music television became increasingly apparent. With this new global visibility, how you looked was just as important as how you sounded, and the right look could take you to the top. MTV's original VJs had a look that reflected the audience, easy to relate to and eager to please. When they began leaving in 1986, a casting call went out for a new, flashier generation of VJs. Some of those who answered the call and auditioned back then would later become household names. But only a select few would actually join MTV's second generation of VJs, and this is their story. I was just bopping around England, doing my thing. And I was the world disco dancing champion in 1979. And I used to do a cable show called Music Box. Hi, and welcome to the Bleeding Soul Show here on Music Box. Somebody had seen a tape. I just got a phone call and they asked if I'd like to come and audition. It was just like, whoa! A job on TV and doing music and having a good time and wearing silly clothes and doing whatever you want? Heck yeah, who would say no? I was uh, studying uh, mechanical engineering at the University of Washington in Seattle, my hometown. There were flyers up on campus, I remember, that there, there was a VJ search, which of course, you know, revolted me. But this is my last job that I had before that was working in a fish packing plant. It took me all summer to make $3,000. I was a little interested. I was coming curious. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. They're all, the windows are all foggy, the mirrors are all foggy this morning. I was a little scruffy, and I know that's not a good way to present yourself to the world. So I, I tried to clean up a little bit. <laughs> I also have some experience in cost estimation and project analyses. Bang on target about shaving for a job interview. That has worked for me every time. I was a DJ before I went to MTV. I had a friend help me make a videotape, and I sent it to them, and they called the day that it arrived. They, they called um, the day it got there, and so we just looked at your tape, and we really like it, and we'd like you to come out and try you out. Tonight, a world premiere video from Whitney Houston. It's called So Emotional. We have it for you three times. No excuse to miss it. Come on, shake your body, baby. Do that conga. Nueva York, no se olviden que todas las tardes a las seis los espero aquí. I was a weather girl for um, one of the Spanish channels in New York. I had no clue what I was doing. I sucked really bad at it. El Mercurio alcanzará los 56 grados en Nueva York, 58 en Nueva York y 54 en Connecticut. I just sent a tape and begged for an audition. I would grab a machine gun. I would go to Don Johnson's house and uh, make him uh, do anything I wanted. I did not say Don Johnson. I was really nervous. I grew up in Holland, uh, right near Amsterdam. I got a, a national television show in uh, the Netherlands called Countdown. I had interviewed just about everybody that you can imagine that was of superstar status, uh, from Madonna to Michael Jackson to uh, Janet Jackson. Then I got a call from um, uh, some guy who said, hey, you want to come work for, uh, for MTV? I said, yeah, are you in London? No, no, New York. Moved to New York and started uh, Halloween uh, 1987. Well, it's time now to meet our brand new VJ, a new member to our Ooh. family. It's Adam Curry. Come on, say hi to everybody. Hey, how, you doing? how you doing? It was the weirdest thing. I mean, imagine walking into a room with you know, downtown Julie Brown and Kevin Seal and Carolyn Heldman, and then they're all dressed up, you know, and they're in costume. Um, they're, they're weird without a costume. So it's like, man, you know, what have I landed in? Hold on the gun there. Oh, I'll hold your piece anytime. It only shoots love, don't worry. <laughs> Immediately I knew 
you know, Julie Brown is going to be interesting to deal with. Um, and, you know, Kevin, you know, off his rocker. He's just nuts. I think he was just missing chromosome. This is how I remember Daisy. Very nice woman, though. Very nice woman. Just was a little, uh, a little skittish around me for, for whatever reason. You're back with a brand new album, Boys in Heat. Yeah. Interesting title. Adam Curry was rock god. You know, he had the hair. You'd always do the hair dryer while I was working. I'd be like, oh, God, Adam's here, blow drying his hair. Don't touch the hair! Do you like my conservative outfit today? Carolyn was sweet. Girl next door um, from Aspen. Carolyn was just like this girl that loved the outdoors, man. She just, like, had her long hair and, you know, she never really... She wasn't into fashion or anything like that. You could dress a lot better for MTV because Julie Brown wears <laughs> bustiers and stuff. And yeah. you, don't, you don't ever even, like, open up this shirt a little. I mean, just a little bit. That's what 16-year-old boys want. <laughs> Everyone else almost were caricatures and I just wasn't. I was just so average that I felt like that that's never going to be enough for hip, cool MTV. The caricatures would all eventually settle into their own place within the MTV family, but it was far from an easy road. The partying, celebrity dating, and constant competition made the MTV studios an explosive place to be in the late 80s. You'll see why when we come back. They made the VJs as big as their superstars. I mean, they really did. Didn't pay us as much as the superstars, but that's okay. MTV 20 live and almost legal. All this chaos under one roof. Wednesday night at 8. You guys all suck. So, our goal was basically to go to the studio that day and have a brilliant time and just have a laugh. I mean, half the time we were talking about the same videos over and over and over again. Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive, I must have introduced that video dozens, if not hundreds of times. We were playing a lot of Michael Jackson at the time, too, and a lot of Madonna. It was the day of the superstar, of the singing superstar. The stars were really big. And then we started to get into the hair bands and, you know, Rat and Poison and Cinderella and White Snake. She's my cherry pie. That whole glam rock thing was gonna, it wasn't ironic yet. And so if you had long hair and face paint, you were meant to be taken seriously. And I think we may have lost that forever. Sitting right here is Johnny Rotten, AKA John Lydon. John Lydon is an excellent interview. Although a little prickly. So you've been quoted saying you'll always be a threat to the majority. <laughs> Sorry, I've got can you, can, <laughs> can you do the other one too? After this <laughs> I the probably one. could, but I'm not gonna. Maybe it's my fault for not leaving Phoenix out for the guests. It haunts me still. The interviews that I did at MTV were the very first interviews I'd ever done. The video's doing real well, yeah. and Dial MTV and everything. Um, you got any new plans for any videos? We're gonna right. do one That's for the song, that one action. It's this gonna be great. As you can tell, the, the, the theme of the song will be uh, very educational. Of course, we never really got to do the great interviews because that went to MTV News. We did the news when we first started off. I'm Adam Curry, welcoming you to The Weekend Rock. Then they hired Kurt. Hi, I'm Kurt Loader, welcome to The Weekend Rock. My credibility was shot to hell the minute Kurt came in. Like, oh man, okay. Thanks, Adam. Right now I'm backstage with Keith Richards. When the news department thugs started muscling in our turf, you couldn't even talk to the members of RAT anymore. No, then it's suddenly it's a news story. Oh, excuse me, Walter Cronkite. I remember my first interview with Billy Idol. That was someone I watched before I got to MTV. I think I sat with my knee up on, on his tour, the Charm Life tour. My knees up, I got my bowler hat on. I was like, this is 
so nervous. Are you going to have a little nap now before the show? What, with you, Julie? <laughs> Thank you, we'll be great after this. <laughs> The whole question of being romantically linked to Billy. I think we kissed. Yeah, I think we kissed a little bit. He's got lovely lips. When he brings it down, and purses him up. He's got a great, great set of lips. I'm not going to tell you everything. <laughs> but you know what kissing leads to. Billy Idol is probably the only rock and roll like person in my in my house in the MTV house that I probably um, suck face with the others unless you've heard any other rumors. Do your fans get to see you in any love scenes or anything? Oh no, you want to tell them what happened in Daytona Beach? Oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna save that one for Barbara Waters if she ever gets around here. I guess rumors flew up all over the place. I think I'm the most slept with woman in the whole country and I Still trying to get a date. I went on a few dates with Paul Stanley of Kiss. We went to a place in New York and had milkshakes, and everyone thinks it's hysterical, because it is hysterical now when you look back at it. The only people who ever wanted to talk to me were like 19-year-old boys. I don't know if they're experimenting with their sexuality or, or whatever. I think that I appealed to uh, to the kind of social misfit and outcast that is not yet in prison. The prisoners were mostly, mostly Julie's job. The mail that she got, I don't know how they let that get out of prison. They still get sticky mail from prison, yeah. A lot of my fan mail came from there, still does, with um, strange requests, rare photos. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> I had the freaky prison fan mail too, you know, that the guy who knows that he speak, that you're speaking to him, and you know, I know you're talking to me, and so as soon as I get out of cell 462, I'm coming. MTV evolved into more niche programming. The pure video and the video jock was becoming a rare beast. Hey, let's dance. Dance like crazy, dance like mad. Dance till you drop. Dance until you smell smoke. You look down, you realize your feet's on fire. The director of this first uh first pilot saw me and let out a low wolf whistle and said, gotta have you. And uh, it turned out that he meant for this, for this club thing. This is Club MTV, and I'm Kevin Club Baby Seal. That pilot never aired. They went for Julie over me. And it's because I wouldn't let the camera go up my, my skirt, I think. It was the best choice they ever made because Club MTV was what I was about. It was about the dance, the fashion, the interviewing, the stars, the wildness. Hello, I'm Kevin Seal, and welcome to Kevin Seal's Sportin' Fool. Oh. Sportin' Fool was probably the, the best thing I did at MTV. Something about it clicked with America. Whether they wanted to see me die or just be hurt, there was, so, it was, there was some connection there with the people, you know, that I found very rewarding on an emotional level. You're right. We go to the to, to the beaches where it, it was just packed with young people and people that were off from school and people that were just going crazy and we would have parties, basically being king of the town that we were in, whichever town it was, because we were MTV. <laughs> the Moscow Music Peace Festival. Um, that was a major, major party from beginning to end. There was Bon Jovi and Motley Crue and Ozzy. You know, flying for 18 hours. Of course, there was no drugs and no booze allowed because this was the let's rock against drugs and alcohol show. I had the feeling that something might have slipped on board. Particularly when, uh, when Ozzy was, um, was pacing around the toilet, he had to go to the bathroom and he was just out of his mind. I mean, on what, I don't know. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like, man. Ozzy just pissed in his pants. <laughs> and he's like, his whole crotch is just, just completely wet. He's like, oh, I couldn't wait anymore. And he just went back and sat and fell back asleep, and that was it. The Club MTV tour it was my last, my last days of uh, MTV. Uh, the whole tour bus thing wasn't, wasn't my idea of a good night out. And that was the beginning of the whole the whole change. Downtown Judy Brown signing off. Oh, wubba, wubba, wubba. Goodbye and God bless. 
good old sea shenanigans. She just needs a little bit of love, a little understanding, a little coat of paint. Live from New York, celebrate 20 years of music television, MTV 20, live and almost legal, with her shaking performances by Nelly, Aerosmith, Bon Jovi, Sugar Ray, Depeche Mode, Blink-182, Billy Idol, Jane's Addiction, Sum 41, Mary J. Blige, Method Man, Run DMC, Busta Rhymes, Salt and Pepper, P. Diddy, Ja Rule, Fred Durst, and DJ Lethal, Kid Rock, Janet Jackson, Tommy Lee, Naughty by Nature, Rob Halford, TLC, and tons of the friends we've made along the way. MTV 20, live and almost legal, Wednesday. What music television gave birth to? MTV. As the 80s wound down, so did the era's fabled culture of excess. It was time to toss the hairspray and tighten the belt, as music and pop culture took on a grittier, more serious attitude. My paychecks had stopped coming, and uh, so I called, a, called payroll about that, and they explained uh, very patiently several times that I was no longer an employee. There was nothing after Club MTV for me because rap came in and you know all these other different shows and so you know I had to go. I had a contract and there were options every year and they didn't pick up the third year um, so technically it was their decision. But I was very involved in the internet. I go in you know introduce Beavis and Butthead a couple times you know, do top 20 countdown and go home and be on the net until three in the morning. I've got to do something. So I finished the show, and on the air I said, that's it. I've done just about everything that there is to do at MTV. Just about every show that ever existed, I think I hosted. And we were able to come to an agreement. I would be able to do other projects. Hey, I'm on MTV dressing up as a clown, riding buffaloes. I'm definitely not too cool to put a milk mustache on and take a picture. <laughs> Nice, good. Every now and then you've got something to promote, do cute little magazine things, and it's a good chance to promote funniest videos, which is what I'm doing now. One of these finalists is going home with 10,000 bucks. It was a big change for me, you know, going from presenting videos on cable to presenting videos on network, but, you know, the few zeros added to the check kind of helped me change my mind. I started working on some pretty interesting uh, projects. Um, I don't know if you uh, if you saw or heard about uh, Buenos Dias La Paz. Me llamo Kevin. Y es la verdad. Fui un MTV DJ. Well, it was my attempt to bring morning television uh, to Bolivia, which apparently has never had it. They, they didn't know what I was talking about. La Paz es un ciudad muy bonita, pero ¿por qué es la aire tan doloroso? ¿Por qué? Porque hay muchas abuelas viejas. Kevin found himself grabbing a piece of the 90s high-tech hysteria when he was hired to popularize interactive movies with I'm Your Man. I could A, go for this girl and uh, I told you why I think she digs me, or I could go on a reconnaissance mission, scope for other babes. It was a whole new way to go to the movies. It would come out differently every time, just like life. You know, it was a brilliant, brilliant concept. Didn't, didn't make a dime, not one thin. It's all the gossip you need. I decided to come to LA and do e entertainment television. I wasn't a big fan of uh, actually people telling other people's business. So I stuck with it um, for a couple of years until I didn't need it anymore. <laughs> Let's rock. Playboy was just a celebration of me. I probably only got a couple of years left in these real boobies, so uh, <laughs> time to let them out. <laughs> Why beat around the bush? No, I did it because I want to be taken seriously and I want to be an actress and people just didn't see me as a woman. Bull crap. They offered me a whole bunch of money, I've got a mortgage and I said yes. Check, 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 check. 
Ooh, my new gig, Pop Life. It's a one hour weekly entertainment show. It'll be on in the fall and uh, it's already been picked up by most of the country. Country well received, thank goodness. We actually did build Tampax.com. Adam and Carolyn have each taken their careers into their own hands, off camera. Uh, opened up Metaverse.com and just kind of evolved into what is now Think New Ideas. We help large companies virtualize their brand. You can buy your Avon products online, uh, which is a big departure for them since they usually work with 400,000 Avon ladies who uh, knock on your door. And we're doing that with large companies. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Yeah, so this is my stockbroker. Patricia and Christina, my wife and daughter, they're ready to move back to Europe. They think it's cool. I think my daughter is uh, severely disappointed that I don't go back to MTV. You know, she, she wants to be very cool at school and uh, having this dad who works in computers and internet just ain't cutting it. <laughs> Three, two, one. Welcome back to Aspen Today, Channel 15. I executive produce a morning show on, the, on skiing and, and what the conditions are for that day. And then I, I run a TV station. <laughs> I'm gonna have white eyebrows. I'm gonna look older than I am. I don't have to wake up and look good in the morning. I can go gray gracefully and not worry about wearing the right thing. I wanna pull bubbles now. Okay, we can do that too. Okay, let's do it right now. I have two little daughters. Um, their names are Blake and Emma, and they're three and two years old, and they're terrors. And my husband's a great guy. He's an attorney in town, and we have a nice little life. Hi. Yeah, you spotted me. Kevin CLX MTV VJ. <laughs> the best thing about being a VJ they almost would never ask for the clothes from the wardrobe back. Officially, it was supposed to be MTV property, but if you let it get a little rank, you know, it was yours. Meeting these people who I considered to be legends and heroes, that to me was the thing that I look back the most fondly. I, I was able to go to places at such a young age and mingle with such cool, crazy characters. I was a part of a very important communications revolution. MTV was a big deal. It was men and rock and roll and hair and fashion. We messed something up with a client. I guarantee you there was someone within the client's company that I could just go and beg and say, hey man, look, you know, remember me from MTV? I mean, cut us a break. Yeah. Uh, you, you may have recognized me, uh, Kevin CLX MTV VJ. Who? <laughs> People got a great sense of humor in this town. No. Oh, come on, give me a hug. Give me a hug. <laughs> so who are you? 